but we know that right. So, if you have disparity large that means the point is closer to the camera, disparity small point is farther off this is very clear. So, that means I have a sense for depth. Now, if I if I take my left camera and I give you a depth map I say that oh this is the depth map you get from this left camera. What can you say about the depth map from the right camera? Should be what should be same that is the question. I mean suppose 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 I say that the same image you can use as a as a depth map for the right will that be correct because depth map means you have to give me an image now. See when you say same right what do you mean? No, no, let us say let us say the entire thing overlaps both cameras see exactly the same scene. I have a depth map here yeah no, but I know but I do not understand what do you mean by same that means I will use the same image ah, Sagnik what should you do? Do you really have to do so much I mean right. So, warp in the sense that uh, why be, see what when you say same same what you are referring to is the z right because the cameras are parallel. Right. Therefore, z uh, but then where it maps will change no you kind of see project it and project it back you have an intrinsic matrix sitting here right you have a t sitting here all that will change where this point goes because it is all about where does that that ray hit that rate I mean if it hits at the same location that means you have a you have a disparity which is 0. I mean how can it hit at the same point right if you give you a depth value and say that at, at x comma y it is let us say 50 and if you say that in the right also at x comma y it is 50. Then, then it means that uh, uh, how can they be at the same location? Ah, yeah, it should be. Yeah, that's what he means by warping. So, what he means is exactly that. But I'm saying that. So, so when when you say same, right? I think what you in your mind what you have is a z is the same. But when you show it as a depth map, you cannot say oh use this for the right guy. That will be wrong, right? So all these subtleties, I think, you know, if you just think a little and little more about it, you'll realize that there is there is you know there's nice structure to all this. Right? You cannot go wrong, right? As long as you think correctly, you cannot go wrong. Okay, computing the fundamental matrix, right? So one thing that we know is uh, the the matrix is actually governed by x tilde dash f x, right? Is equal to huh? so we have this, right? So x tilde now we know that we know that right, this is this is actually a correspondence, right? We know that I mean, this is not arbitrary points, right? X tilde and x tilde dash are corresponding points, points in the suppose I know, see, okay. Now the point is we we know this this uh, this equation is valid, right? Now, now, now what we want to do is if I had now if I wanted to estimate if I do not have my f with me right if I had to find my f I could I could actually as you know I could actually do it I mean, right I mean uh, no I could actually do it by simply by simply right getting enough number of these point correspondences across these images okay, and, and, and in this case need not be a parallel camera and all right whatever whatever be the situation. I have actually right two images with me and I want to find out what is that fundamental matrix that actually okay you know what is f and what is of course f transpose that relates p l and p r and p r and p l right. Now, given that given given these point correspondences now right if you think of x and x tilde dash as point correspondences now. Now, and f as a matrix right which is okay this is simple right I mean no, no, I do not have to spend too much time on this all of you know this. So, this is like f 2 1 this is similar to that homography thing that we did except that there is a small difference okay which I will highlight. So, f 3 3 3 right. So, you have f and therefore, right, if you actually write this equation down then for one point correspondence I will just write down okay what you get and then and then and then the rest right you can check x 1 x 1 dash x 1 y 1 dash x 1 y 1 x 1 dash y 1 y 1 dash y 1 x 1 dash y 1 dash 1 okay that is how one row will look and then this is multiplying a vector f okay which is like this guy is stacked up okay as a kind of a 9 cross 1 that is the way you do not typically right you just convert it into something into as an unknown and known. So, the known is this matrix on the left which is a data thing right where you know that x tilde prime and x tilde are, are basically you know, this is a correspondence that somebody gives you. So, so that correspondence will have to come from something like SIFT or SURF because we do not know the epipolar right we do not go and search now because we do not know where the epipolar is because we do not know f right. So, 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 so these correspondences have to come from something like what you already learnt SIFT or sir, SIFT or SEARCH or whatever right uh, so SURF or whatever. So, these point correspondences have to actually come from there. 
Now, one point correspondence is uh, correspondence give me a, gives me actually one equation, right, of this kind, and and I have actually I have actually nine unknowns, but I know that but I know that my f actually has only seven unknowns in it, right? We said yesterday, right? It's rank two, and then it's also it can also be found only up to a scale factor, right? So so it has actually only see seven unknowns, okay. So 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 actually, right? There is a there is a very kind of famous algorithm, what's called the what's called the eight point algorithm, okay, and 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 uh, it, and what is done there you can, you can of course extend it to the case when you have let us see typically you do not start at start stop at 8 points you typically take because of noise right you will typically construct a matrix that will be like you say m cross 9 where where m is m is much much larger than 8 actually but then but then there is a there is a, there is a, there is an 8 point algorithm which if you assume that you have exact point correspondence somebody gives you the most ideal case no noise or everything right then uh, then and it's eight point algorithm works as follows suppose you call this matrix as a right then then what 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 it will do is it says that right af equal to 0 and 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 right uh, this is actually 8 cross 9 and uh, this is 9 cross 9 and and because of the fact that you know a is a has a can only only have a maximum rank of 8 right so we know that you know there is a non zero f right which it maps to 0 and that uh, that can be found as kind of say right null of a so right so this null of a will give you this f Okay, and and it will it'll exactly satisfy a f equal to zero because a has only rank eight, right? And that f right is only known up to of course uh, you know a co up to a scalar up to a factor, but then it need not have rank two. This f right has found out right. There's no we have not uh, there is no we have not automatically enforced a rank two on it. Whereas we know that the fundamental matrix should have a rank two. So as, compo as compared to the homography and all that we did, right, where we simply accepted the matrix as it is, and we said up to a scale factor. Here we have to do a little bit more, right? We have to we have to kind of get an get an f hat, right, which is, which is which is as close as possible to f, and should have a rank two, right? So so what this means is that so the f f if you so you can you can you can reshape f as this matrix, right? F one one f one two whatever f that you get from the from the SVD, right? Whatever you do here SVD, you get your get your let us say f whatever right whichever way you get your f now that f you can you can reshape as a 3 cross 3 matrix and now and now and now right what you are what you are expecting is a matrix f hat which is as close as possible to f but should be ranked to how do you do that there is a, there is you know a theorem right which you if you have done SVD you would be aware of that right but i'm saying that you know, why do you do that is because because uh, because right there is uh, actually right you know a theorem that says that that says that if you want if you have if you have a matrix a or whatever right in this case f right you have this matrix a and then and then if you want if you if you if you want uh, if you want uh, let's say right a certain rank approximation of this right which is of course of the same size right the other matrix will also be of the same size but then in terms of a rank approximation right you want the best approximating matrix so you specify a rank right you say that i want this new matrix to have a rank whatever 2 or something in this case but then i want it to be as close as possible to f then the only thing right the only thing that can actually that can actually give you give you another matrix f hat which is which uh, which has the lowest frobenius norm between f and f hat right that's what you mean right? when you say closest you mean in the frobenius norm sense Okay, so in the Frobenius norm sense, SVD only does that. I mean, that's what that's what he is referring to. So then, what you should do is you should do a, do do a, do a decomposition of F as U sigma, let's say V transpose, and the sigma will have typically all all you see non-zero singular values. So it will have like zero sigma two zero 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 sigma three, and if you order them, right? If you, I'm I'm writing this in a, in a particular order, right? I'm assuming that right sigma one is greater than or equal to whatever right I mean uh, greater than equal to sigma 2 and then greater than or equal to sigma 3 then what you should do is you should force sigma 3 to 0 right. So what you do is you make this as sigma 1 0 0 0 sigma 2 0 0 0 0 this becomes a and if you multiply u sigma transpose then this f hat right you pick you pick any any right uh, f hat in the world for the for, for that matter you can try it using MATLAB pick any f hat for that matter of 3 cross 3 in the world and try to find out the Frobenius norm between the actual f and this f hat the only thing that will give you the smallest Frobenius norm is this nothing else right but you can randomly keep on choosing rank 2 of course you have to choose rank 2 right rank 2 f hat as many matrices of size 3 cross 3 you can choose and uh, and uh, find the Frobenius norm between f and f hat every time keep computing that number the only number that will be smallest is this 
ok. So, so this so, so right that is how you compute the compute the fundamental matrix. Now, now there is this one other thing right which uh, which I wanted to tell that is that is the actual depth itself right. We still have not seen how to compute depth right that is actually pretty straightforward. So, depth from this one at disparity right and we will talk about the parallel camera case. You can also do something similar using a triangulation idea even if you have non converging sorry even if you have you know if you do not have a parallel camera case that means you have converging case also you can do, but then we will not enter into that right when we will just talk about the case where let us say we have actually rectified so that we have parallel cameras ok. Now, the way the way to see it is if I have say x tilde right with respect to the left camera I have k l and then i 0 right and then x tilde which is which is my 3D point whose depth I want to find out. Then a corresponding match right once I have found out that means I have the fundamental matrix I have searched I have found this guy x tilde dash to be the best match for x tilde right. So, so this is a correspondence ok that through search. See I mean right there is a there is a whole literature right that even tells how to how to kind of right, do this searching right. One way is like I said I right, take a patch here and then try to match it there, but then that could be sensitive to noise and other things. So, so there are very many robust ways there are actually energy functionals that you can evolve that will also take care of smoothness in the depth because it should not happen that one guy has one value depth and the next guy suddenly shoots up. In nature it does not normally happen unless you have you know this one a discontinuity otherwise right, things are typically locally smooth right. So, all those constraints you can put in and make it a far more complex problem that is the way it is actually solved ok. But for this course we do not want to get into all that we just want to understand what is the basics uh, right what, what are the basics. So, say x tilde dash will then be k right and I will have identity and then a t and then and then this is a right x tilde right and where this t is simply a baseline b 0 0 and, and this baseline we know ok this is a known baseline. In the in the next class right when I when I talk about structure for motion that is like what happens if some of these things are not known I mean I know that it is a parallel camera setup, but I do not know the actual spacing. I do not know the baseline value, but I know that it is a parallel camera setup that I can find out through the fundamental matrix. I know that the epipole is at infinity, so I know that it is a parallel case, but I do not know the exact baseline right? then what do you do ok that is what is structure from motion where the camera poses are not known right? this is a slightly simpler case where you are assuming that if somebody gives me everything right. So, B 0 0. So, then what will happen? So, you will have like K R and then uh, X plus B y z right I mean assuming that this is some x y z. So, x plus b k r right. So, now if I take my k l equal to k r that is like the same camera right I just translate by some baseline right and suppose I put this as f 0 0 0 0 ok all this is not needed that is what I am trying to tell you I am just making it simple for to just make it easy for us to, to do on, on a board. So, then what do you have x tilde is equal to ok what is this. Uh, so, you will have this f x uh, and then uh, f y and z right ok and then x tilde dash right? you will have f x plus f b f y f z right. And, uh, and therefore, right if you if you if you compute the image coordinate because that is what you have right a disparity. So, if you compute the image coordinate you have for the for the x for the left left guy you like x y 1 or you can simply write right x equal well if you wish whichever way f x by z f y by z no comma and then 1 and then on the on the right hand side you have x dash y dash 1 this is again a coordinate right that you have found out and this will be equal to f x plus f b by z f y by z 1 oh sorry uh, yeah, no. This is uh, this is uh, this is uh, yeah, there's no f there. That's just one. Okay. Now a disparity, right? I mean, as you can see, right? Y one is equal to y dash, which is expected, right? You can't have a change in the y coordinate, right? That has to be in the same row. The only thing that will change is where does where does x map to, right? Therefore, if you if you compute uh, you know a disparity as let's say a delta, that's x dash minus x, right? Then then you can show that it is simply equal to f b by z, right? So it's, so so it's only a function of z 
the focal length and then and then the baseline or in or in turn you can say that this is equal to fb by by this one delta right so if you want to know the you know the depth all that you need to do is uh, you know know the focal length know the baseline know the know this one a disparity and then right and then okay you have your z and this is exactly the z that we are talking about when we say depth map depth map and for that point what is the z value right that you can plot and uh, hmm What is it? F x plus F b, no? Because you will you will do x. You know, I mean, this is x plus b, right? Because there is only translation, so x becomes x plus b, and therefore f x plus F b by z. So the z, uh, right? So 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 as you can see, if you have a disparity that is small, that means delta becomes small, then your z will be large. That is to say that the point is farther away. If you say delta is very large, oh sorry, wait a minute, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, right. And if you say delta is large, then it means that, that your z is small. That means you have a point that's actually that's actually uh, that's actually close to the camera, right? So this disparity in z will go right uh, will go kind of you know inverse to each other. So so right here is where issues like these and all come up, right? In the sense that okay, now if you I mean if you run an open CV or something, right? This is what it'll do actually. There are there are there are two things that right, which I did not talk about. There's one thing called a camera calibration. Okay, calibration means that you should know your k. In this case, we are assuming f is known and all, right? Suppose that it was a five-parameter matrix, you would have had to know everything, right? In order to do this, you can do this, but then you should have, you should know the you know the this one, right? Intrinsics of the camera. So that involves what is called a camera calibration, which is a, which is a one-time effort. That's also fairly involved. Again, right? One cannot teach all that in a in a course of uh, in a course that has so many things to cover. But in but in some advanced course, you know, they do talk about that camera calibration. Right? One can do that. Okay, it's not so difficult and all. But just that, right? People talk about then distortions and all that you can incorporate nonlinear distortions. All that it comes as a nice package, the calibration part. Okay, so because there could also be lens, you uh, know, sort of uh, this one uh, distortions and all. Sometimes you would have seen, no, you'll have this what is called uh, know, a fisheye effect and all, right? So all that you can counter in that. So calibration is something that we that we did not talk about. And that is something that you need to do. And open CV and all right. If you run, that's what it'll do. It'll do the calibration. It'll do. It'll do a rectification. Then it'll do this calculation of depth and give you. But now, I think right, having 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 found all this right, you should now have the confidence that if somebody says I have a depth map and all right, you should at least be able to able to able to relate it to geometry, epipolar, all that right. You should know fundamental matrix. All of this, you should you should at least be able to speak a few words about all of that right, so that. Right, compared to compared to what you knew right prior to this course and at least right after you do the course right there should be a, there should be a difference in your in terms of what you can what you can understand about actually right a 3d geometry hmm. so and so so i'll stop here so next class right we will do what is called structure from motion mm -hmm.